No mai hara mai ki kaupapa on the couch. He māori tanga te kaupapa o te rānei. Actually, do you guys want to get out of here? I want to go to a movie. So I've come to the Māori Land Film Festival here in beautiful Ōtaki. about you, but some of my favourite films ever made were made by Māori filmmakers. There's something really special about when New Zealanders and when Māori make films. What is it about the Indigenous perspective that's so important? Why is it so important to me that I see people on the screen that look like me? The only way to answer those questions is to ask some experts. Libby Hakaraya, Festival Director here at Māori Land Film Festival in Ōtake. Tēnā koe hoa. E mihi kawana ki a koe leone. Lovely to sit on your couch oh, here thank in Ōtake. Who are some of your Indigenous filmmaking heroes? The first time I saw a film that actually made me uh, realise, I guess, realise that that we could be film storytellers as well. And I think that would have to be Modi for me. And I see, as a young person, I saw Utu and I was just like, it was almost like, are we allowed to tell those stories on the big screen? You know, which then you say, why am I asking for permission? I think that you gotta pay, we gotta pay our respects to our tupun in the business. People like uh, Barry Barclay, director of um, Ngāti, and Tom Huata, the writer of Ngāti, uh, Merata Mita, writer and director of um, uh, Modi, um, Don Selwyn, We Cookie Car. Those people were so significant. They were larger than life characters. They had immense talent, huge commitment, and they were all really naughty. I first met Merita in New York. She came to NYU to consult with some of the librarians about how to actually do things in a uh, by in a tika way, um, thinking about archival collections, um, and Merita really handed it to this librarian once, and I was so impressed. And she like stood up for what was right, and she wasn't going to back down, you know, and like really could stand her ground. Um, and that in her doing that, she's created this space for so many other filmmakers to follow mm. behind her, not just Maori people, not just indigenous people, um, just people in general. That, uh, yeah, she's one of the most impressive women I've ever met. Why is it important to you to come to film festivals like Maori Land Film Festival? Because I think it educates me. Um, I think it's wonderful to see um, life from a different perspective to what I'm used to. Alex Lazarevich, the Cree Nation, you're here in Ōtaki with your film Fast Horse. Uh, I believe Fast Horse won a grand jury prize at Sundance recently. Yes, we did. We <laughs> did. <laughs> That energy in letting kids see someone that looks like them on screen, like that's that's not a feeling that can be bought or taught at school or anything oh. like that. The moment you see yourself on screen being represented how you are yes. and how your family is and how your friends are, that means everything. Mita Merita said it really great um, that cinema is a revolution and we have to, we're in a revolution right now and we're changing the lens in the world and the space. I grew up not seeing myself on screen ever, ever in my entire life. It wasn't, it, we never saw ourselves on the big screen. But if kids can see themselves on the big screen now, what is the revolution that they're going to bring 20 years from now, 10 years from now, five years from now? Why do you think uh, it's important for uh, these kinds of film festivals to have a focus that's solely on indigenous voice and indigenous storytelling? Um, because it tells us all about ourselves. It tells us who we are. And um, yeah, it's good. I mean, we can live here in Ōtaki and we can just feel as though we are in some isolated little community, but then we start to see that we're part of a bigger picture. And uh, that tells us more about who we are. What do you think Indigenous storytellers and filmmakers bring to the medium and the art form that is missing from, from Marvel and from mainstream storytelling? That's a good question. Um, 
I'd say just like our perspective, because um, I think so much of our life and like our daily life is rooted in our past and kind of our older traditions. And so some of those things like it may be like romance or comedy or drama, but it has like just a different aspect to it, like a different like um, like a unique act or like a unique conflict that would only kind of happen in indigenous cultures and traditions. What state is Māori film in right now? Are we in a good place for ourselves and sort of globally? Do you think we've got mana and standing on the global stage? We're in a good place. Um, our agency, our film commission, Tumufakata Māori, have, you know, evolved, are evolving with Indigenous film and with Māori and Pacifica film. So we're in a good place. Globally, we're in a good place because we're connected with a global Indigenous film circle now. People like Chelsea, Wynne Stanley and mm-hmm. Taika Waititi and Jerome, you know, they've been active in that space. So now we, more of us need to, to move to that area because it's not about you know, being afraid of making money or being successful. Mm. It's about being the example for those ones that are coming through. At the moment, there's a new generation coming through. Not only have they been, if you like, um, through that real Māori kind of system and come out with a bicultural, bilingual understanding, they know how to play with the the technology. And um, so they bring a different feel, but there's still a generation of storytellers. And I think, you know, for us here at Māori, and for those who make film, uh, there's, you know, we think there's a whakapapa in the whole world of storytelling and you can easily say it started with our kai kōru and our kai karanga on the marae and the stories that they told. And the only way we can get our stories out is by passing them on, telling people about them. So I look at it in three stages. From the time you're growing up, you're listening to the stories of your kaumata and queen. When you're in your rangatahi and, and young adulthood, you're making stories. And you don't know your stories you're made until you become older, like us. Mm. And then you, oh, you know, and then you start telling your stories to your mokopuna. Mm. So that you become a storyteller. And that's the best part of life is being a storyteller. What is the difference between these festivals that focus the Indigenous voice and other film festivals that don't? What, what, what are the different things people are getting out of that? There's a feeling of, of acceptance. And, and it's something um, that we talk about a lot is that you don't have to explain yourself to people. And I think that there's a a lot of work that happens when you're indigenous of always trying to explain yourself to non-indigenous people so why you dress the way you dress why you look the way you look why you think the way you think and I think once that's stripped away there's this wonderful feeling of freedom and the feeling of freedom is also the ability to create and tell stories and once that's stripped away from sort of who you are of having to explain all of the time to everybody and educate everybody all the time it's time they need to educate themselves they can ask for help and ask questions questions, but it's not my responsibility. I don't have enough time in the world right now to do that because I want to do so many other things for our people instead of trying to constantly educate and tell white people what they what they should know. Great sister. I love that. <laughs> I'm here for that. I stand there so hard. What is uh, the most important thing um, in approaching Indigenous film and keeping my eyes and my mind open to to new ideas? I think it's just what you just said, just keeping your mind and eyes open. Um, but you will have to put in some effort to understand some of these worlds, that it's not going to be uh, talking out all the time, right? That that sense of like it's your responsibility as a viewer to learn how to understand some of these films, to take a little bit more effort upon yourself to bring that understanding that's there. Um, that and to approach it with respect. Do you think indigenous filmmaking is all inherently political or do you think it, it's a necessary part of our storytelling is that we're also silly and romantic and all of those sorts of things as well? Oh, we're everything. <laughs> and I mean it. We are everything. And I think every indigenous nation with its own uh, resonant experiences with our own to all sorts of degrees, they go through their state of searching for justice and searching for identity and these things are a natural part of the growth and evolution of a people coming to terms with the times that we live in. I think film captures our people's um, hearts 
because they see representation of themselves in Indigenous film, but they also see people moving, breathing, you know, the sound, all of that sort of comes together. And there's power in seeing ourselves, there's power in seeing ourselves reflected back, and it's been missing for so long, and I think the revolution is coming, and it's, cinema's a part of it, and, and we're going to be here for it, and we're going to be ready. It's your whānau. Turns out we're really good at telling stories. That much I already knew. Māori, our Indigenous whanaunga from across the sea, it's what we all do, it's what connects us together. I was really touched by the kōrero from our kaumātua about how when we're born, we listen to the stories. We get a little bit older, we make the stories. And then when we're older still, we tell the stories. This to me is what Indigenous filmmaking is all about. It's about raising our voice for future generations. It's about whakapapa. <sighs> what a great weekend! Tēnei te mahi nui ki a Libby, rātou ko Tainui, ko Medi for looking after us and a huge mahi to all the amazing filmmakers and fans we met. What do you love about New Zealand film? Do you think Māori representation is getting better? Are there voices that are still missing? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Hey tērā marama, we'll see you next month for another episode of Kaupapa on the Couch.